Hello everyone and welcome, my name is Jamal Kandir from Pets of Droidness and today I'm going to be covering the circulation system. In the previous series of videos we talked about all the basic information about drill mods, so if you want to check that out, please go ahead um, in the channel page. Uh, in the next couple of videos I'm going to be uh, covering the circulation system, as I said. The functions of the circulation system are the same as those of the drill mod. Um, there are three, I mean the, there are many, but the three main ones that I mentioned in this video are uh, the drilling bit lubrication and cooling as well as the uh, pressure control for the well bore uh, and uh, because of the hydrostatic pressure and also uh, cutting strands of rotation and the cleaning of the bottom hole um, because of the jetting action from the drill bit. To make explaining the circulation system easier I'll split, them in, uh, I'll split the circulation system into three parts uh, the inlet so from the mud tank to the uh, bottom hole and then what happens in the bottom hole that's the second one and the third one is the outlet so what happens from the bottom hole until it goes back to the inlet or the mud tank in this case so let's start at the inlet as i said in the mud tank so first you have the mud tank the liquid that you have and you want to mix things so you uh, the bar the barite the barite the bentonite the polymers all that uh, into the mud and you do that with the mixing hopper uh, the our dear mud engineer tells the rest about to uh, mix a fixed number of sacks into the uh, mud tank th uh, through the mixing hopper. After mixing all of these additives into the uh, mud tank, uh, there has to be a period of time where the mud engineer makes sure that all the properties are per uh, the design of the well. So. Um, when I say properties, I mean the density, the viscosity, the gel strength, etc. Uh, of the properties of the mud. Um, and then after he makes sure, or he, she makes sure that uh, this is per the design, then they can start drilling. And that means that the uh, pump, the mud pump starts to work. The function of the mud pump is to pump the mud into the well bore. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, but just I'm throwing it out there in case someone doesn't know. It's called a mud pump. It pumps the mud into the well bore. Uh, so um, there are two types of uh, mud pumps. There is the triplex pumps, and then there is the second type, which is the duplex pumps. Triplex pumps have three pistons. The, each of them is single acting, meaning that the on a backward stroke, it's sucking in the mud from the mud tank into the pump, and then on a forward stroke, that mud that was uh, sucked in from the mud tank is pushed out to the well bore. Why wouldn't one uh, use one piston only? And that's because if you have one piston and you're uh, sucking in the mud, there is no pressure, and then you're pushing out the mud, there is a peak of pressure that dissipates, and then again, there is a period where you have zero pressure, and then you have maximum pressure. And that fluctuation in, the, in uh, pressure is very dangerous. Here's why. You, if you have a 3000 PSI uh, formation pressure at a certain depth and you're drilling through that and you have the hydro hydrostatic pressure of the mud at 2800 PSI. So uh, you would need um, let's say 500 PSI to make that well bore overbalanced. We mentioned what overbalanced is in this video. If you want to check it out, please go ahead. If you provide that 500 PSI of pressure on and off, that means you will be moving uh, from overbalanced to underbalanced, overbalanced to underbalanced, overbalanced to underbalanced in seconds, and you wouldn't want that for obvious reasons. Uh, you don't want to get kicks every couple of seconds. Uh, so that's why you add another uh, piston to provide a pressure where there is no pressure. And that looks better, but there is still kind of a fluctuation between the two. So you add another piston. So you have three pistons. There is much less fluctuation, but it's still kind of not what you want. So that's where the pulsation dampener comes into play. So you have a very small fluctuation, which you don't, you still don't want it. So you use the pulsation dampener, which has um, some type of gas in it that is pushed out um, and thus it kind of causes your wave or your pressure profile to be uh, steady and there you have it steady pressure from a triplex pump uh, the three pistons and then the um, 
beautiful pulsation dampener that uh, dampens your pulse, <laughs> uh, making the pressure uh, steady. There is also the less used duplex pumps. Uh, they're less used because they need more maintenance, which means that they cost more and the overall performance of triplex pumps are uh, most of the times better than duplex pumps. Let's talk about what double acting means. So on a forward stroke, the mud that was in the right chamber uh, goes out through the right discharge valve, but at the same time, the mud from the left inlet valve goes in from the mud tank towards that chamber so on a backward stroke the opposite happens the mud that came in last uh, uh, forward stroke on the backward stroke it goes out uh, through the left discharge valve whereas the mud from the mud tank goes into the right chamber from the inlet the right inlet uh, valve push out at the same time suck in and then push out at the same word suck in and then push out at the same word suck in and then push out at the same word suck in <laughs> I hope it makes sense mud pumps usually come in pairs so two duplex ones or two triplex ones um, just so if one decides to fail you have a backup one as well as if you have uh, severe mud losses maybe you would use both uh, mud tanks or sorry uh, both uh, mud pumps uh, let's continue on the mud's journey yeah so uh, it goes out to a pipe that is standing called a stand pipe um, there is not really much significance in or uh, complexity in the design of the pipe it's standing so it has to be rigid uh, and it's it has to withstand high pressures obviously because you're um, exerting pressure on it by the mud pump uh, to be able to uh, cause that pressure downhole. Then comes the Kelly hose, which uh, provides the uh, flexibility between the standpipe and the swivel. Uh, of course, you can't connect them, um, it's flexible, but you, you can't um, connect the two. Uh, immediately you have to get a gooseneck and then another gooseneck and a gooseneck is a u-shaped or small end shaped um, pipe that uh, allows the 180 degree um, change in uh, the flow direction of the mud so one uh, goes out from the uh, sand pipe to the kelly hose and then the other one from the Kelly hose to the swivel. Uh, the swivel and the Kelly, not the Kelly hose, so swivel and Kelly, uh, they're uh, on top of each other. They both have a significant role in other systems or in one of the other systems, uh, maybe more than one, but in this one, they're just a path for the mud to flow through. Uh, the Kelly is uh, either hexagonal or square. Uh, it's uh, a steel pipe not a pipe but a steel bar that has a hole in it that allows the mud to flow uh, through it. It has to be very strong uh, to provide something in another system. I'll talk about it later. Now we move on to the downhole equipment. Uh, you have the first which is the uh, motor, the mud motor. Um, the idea of the mud motor is if you don't want to uh, rotate the whole drill string, you just want to rotate the drilling bit, uh, you will use the immense power of the hydrostatic pressure of the mud to rotate the motor and thus when you rotate rotate the motor, uh, motor the, the motor it's designed in a way that when, when the mud passes through it it rotates and that rotation is mechanically um, transferred to the drilling bit thus giving it that torque and that um, rotation speed rpm so the mud reaches the drilling bit and the drilling bit has those uh, small openings called uh, nozzles or jets they're very small they're, they're they're about this size to this size and but they have a huge role uh, to clean all of the bottom hole and um, allow the continuation of drilling because if you don't have the, those nozzles uh, let's say you have just a, a big opening you wouldn't have that uh, change that drastic change in velocity because of the change in diameter you, you're going from let's say a, a three inch pipe or a six inch pipe to a uh, six thirty twos of 
an inch so or, or let's say half an inch just to make it <laughs> just just to make it less complex so uh, yeah you're going from um, this size to this size so the velocity increases significantly hugely enormously hugely <laughs> uh, to uh, and the velocity helps in cleaning the bit as well as the bottom hole uh, and then uh, allow that transportation of the cuttings. Um, the uh, nozzles, the size of the nozzles are uh, usually reported in 1 in 32s, so from 6 32s to 3, 32 32s uh, of an inch. Uh, and yeah, so the mud goes from the annulus, goes up to the surface we'll talk about the surface in the next video inshallah i hope this video was entertaining useful or useful entertaining and uh, most of all uh, clear uh, if it wasn't please let me know in the comment section below and i'll uh, try my best to clear any confusion that i may have caused um, like subscribe and all that nonsense and hopefully you'll see me guys in the next one talking about the second part of the circulation system Hiya.